Hey everyone, welcome to episode 27 of our Unshakable podcast, and I'm so excited that you decided to join me today on this Wednesday at 12 noon, or if you're watching this later on, thank you for taking the time to connect with our YouTube channel and uh, with this podcast. It airs every Wednesday at 12 noon, so again, just make sure that you're connecting with us, but today we want to go back and talk about some things we have been on in our current series called Going Mental. And excited about this series. I really feel like that God's speaking to people. I think it's a big need, obviously. And a lot of people have dealt with anxiety, which is really fear, or they've dealt with uh, depression. Um, I think it's various reasons and, and uh, you know, why people are really dealing with it, which we won't go all into today. But we've been uh, talking about this for the last couple of weeks at church, had great responses. And uh, this past Sunday, we went down the road of anxiety uh, which is really dealing with fear, scripturally, is what anxiety is. It's, it's, it's a spirit of fear or those fearful feelings that we have. And so how do we deal with them biblically? How do we overcome any type of disorder maybe that, has, uh, that uh, someone has diagnosed us with? Or how do we overcome just even those feelings of anxiety or anxious thoughts or fear maybe that seems so overwhelming at times? So we went back into the scriptures to see what God had to say about it because we all know this to be true, that there is nothing that's out there, no problem, no situation, no sickness, uh, no bondage that Jesus doesn't have an answer for. When he died for us, he died upon the cross to redeem us totally, to redeem us spirit, soul, and body. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. So uh, as we're talking about mental health, this is not something that's uh, off limits to God. No, this is something that God very much wants to get involved with and bring us freedom in, and especially in the area of anxiety and fear. And I just want to give you just a little bit today, more of a nugget. I won't be real long. And then I'll close the podcast with some other things that we're going to talk about, or maybe have you get prepared for for, uh, the the days ahead. So uh, I want to look at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. And, and this was uh, the, the main scripture that we were going off of. I really think that it's, it's, it's the main scripture for this series, if, if you want to get down to, to the bottom of it all, is because if you don't do this scripture, you're going to have a really difficult time having any type of mental health or any type of wholeness, any type of freedom. Uh, we are a church, obviously, that believes uh, that we have authority and power over devils and demons to drive them out, according to Mark chapter 16, part of the great commission that Jesus gave us. We can drive demons out if someone does actually have a demonic spirit that's oppressing them. We can take authority over things, but unless you as an individual do something with your mind, unless you take authority over your thoughts and begin to renew your mind with the Word of God, then you're not going to really have the the mental health that you're so desiring to have. So Romans 12, 2 in the Passion Translation says this. It says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. I I want us to start with the last part of that verse. It says that God wants us to have a beautiful life. It's satisfying, uh, perfect in his eyes. It doesn't mean that everything in your life is perfect and there's no problems or there's no challenges. It's just that God has a life for you that is filled with his life, that's filled with, uh, you know, his power, his presence, uh, a relationship with him. And it's not a life of bondage. It's not a life of brokenness. It's actually actually a life of healing, health, wholeness, freedom, liberty. Uh, that's why Jesus came. He said, the spirit of the Lord has came upon me because he's anointed me to to preach the gospel to the poor, to bring recovery of sight to the blind, to heal the brokenhearted, to bring deliverance to the captives. So Jesus came to bring us health, wholeness, freedom, deliverance. And that's really God's plan for us. But uh, as you back up in this scripture, then it, it tells you how to get that, is that we can't just deal with life's problems according to how the world deals with things. Now, the world will they'll try to cope, but obviously there's a lot of alcoholism that happens, a lot of drug abuse, 
even, uh, you know, even prescribed medications that people get on, and they try to just take care of their problems that way. And uh, again, you may be medically on something that the doctors has prescribed for you, so I'm not putting you down on that, but I don't think that's the total victory that God wants you to have. I believe that God wants us to complete, be completely free in our minds from every bondage, from every stronghold, from all brokenness, all hurts, from all disorders. And he wants to bring us to a place of complete, total reformation of our minds. And he says that we can't just imitate how the world does things. But what should we do? Well, we've got to inwardly be transformed, or really talking about our minds, talking about our souls, our minds, wills, and emotions, be transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how we think. You know, here at the church, we're doing renovations, and I don't know, you might hear some more renovations, like we've said before in previous podcasts, and you've probably heard some things happening uh, behind the scenes that sounds like renovations in previous podcasts. We're still in it. But it's moving fast, it's moving quick, and I, I believe that we're going to see a lot of things happening now. I feel like we went over the, uh, the top of the hill, now we're going back down the hill, and I feel like that we're going to see things happening quickly. Uh, however, there's been many weeks or even months where we feel like, man, this is, this is like longer than we thought, harder than we thought, more issues than what we thought. And, uh, but that's, that's renovations. When you're coming in to renovate stuff, you begin to find out things that you didn't know about. You begin to re see things you didn't know that were there. And that happens when it comes to really renovating your mind, having, uh, you know, that, that, that process where you begin to think differently. And you can tell, you can hear some pounding going on. There you go. I started talking about renovations and sure enough, they decided to come where we were at. But uh, nonetheless, you know, you got to get in there and you, it, when you're starting to renovate your mind and begin to think differently about life and situations and what happened in the past, who you are, what you identify with, who God is, what your future looks like, when you begin to change all of that thinking, sometimes you start diving in there and you, you, you start realizing there's more of a mess in there than I thought there was in my mind. And you begin to realize that there's more things that need to be changed. And maybe it's taken you longer to get some things done than what you thought need to be done. But the most powerful thing is, is that if you'll stick in there with the Word of God and stick in there with the Holy Spirit, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word, will help you get your mind renovated to think like He thinks. And I think fear, anxiety, worry, it, stressing out about today, stressing out about tomorrow, just having sleepless nights, having, you know, just... Uh, just bits of or moments of, of major anxiety that maybe even throws you into panic attacks. Uh, God wants to help you in this and he wants to really bring you out of it to bring you into complete freedom. And I believe that if you'll get a hold of just a couple things, one, knowing what you have, what God's given you, the Bible says he's not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. <clears throat> the Bible clearly says that we have the mind of Christ. So we have a sound mind. It's there, but we've got to get that working in our physical mind itself. And we do that by meditating, feeding on these scriptures like 2 Timothy 1.7 and 1 Corinthians 2.16 and getting those truths just in our thinking so that we think this way, that when fear comes, anxiety comes, or certain things come, we know immediately, no, no, we know what we have. We have the spirit of power. We have the spirit of love. We have the spirit of a sound mind, a calm mind, a, a disciplined mind, a, a well-balanced mind, one that's under control. We have the very mind of Christ, which changes everything whenever we begin to believe it and we begin to speak these things out, <clears throat> allowing God to, to do a work of renovation, how we think. But then, you know, you have to know who's for you. And we talked about that on Sunday as well. You got to know that God's not against you. He's for you. And when you know that, it changes everything. It, it causes fear to dissipate when you know that the Heavenly Father is there, that the Holy Spirit is there, that the love of the Father is right there with you. And you're, 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 you're seeing God just move in a mighty way. But that that, that an understanding of, of God's love and his presence and him being for you, not against you, changes everything. God said himself he would never leave us without support. He would never fail us. He would never leave us helpless. That he would be there as our helper in every situation, our ever-present help in time of trouble. He told us we could cast all of our cares on him because he does care for us and he would take good care of us. 
I mean, if earthly fathers take good, good care of their kids, how much more will our heavenly father? But when you begin to renew your mind with these principles from like Romans 8, 31 and Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, even over there into 1 Peter 5, 7, these verses begin to become a part of you and you begin to think this way. What does that do? Well, it, it's brainwashing you in a good way and it's getting you to think like God thinks about yourself, about him, about life. And that's really where the word begins to work, that work of healing and that work of deliverance in our lives. The word's powerful. In fact, God says about his own words. He says that, that my words are, are, are like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. My words are like a fire that burns up the chaff. My words are like the healing balm of Gilead that, that brings healing to brokenness. That my word is like a two-edged sword but also his word brings transformation. It brings salvation, according to James chapter one. So when we put that word in us and we believe in the power of that word, it will change our lives. I'm telling you, it does. And the Holy Spirit connects to the word. So that's a little bit of a synopsis, maybe more than a nugget, maybe a few nuggets that are in there, but I know that'll help you because God wants you to live free from anxiety, from fear, from whatever has happened in your life that's caused you to go down this certain pattern of thinking. And I want to just give you this last verse here because I think it's very powerful. It's, it's found in John 14, 27, where Jesus said, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace, my own peace I give and bequeath to you. It's not as the world gives do I give to you. So we've been talking about this in the series, but the peace that Jesus gives us is his own peace. It's heavenly peace. It's supernatural peace. It actually supersedes it, it transcends worldly peace by, I don't know, I don't even know how much to say how much it does. It just is so, it's at a totally different level that you can't even comprehend it with your own brain. However, when that peace comes, it brings freedom, it brings healing, and it's there, it's on the inside of you, but you've got to allow that peace to operate. And that's when Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled, don't let them be afraid. It, it goes in the Amplified Bible, it says it this way, stop allowing yourself. You, you got to quit allowing yourself to get in fear. You have to stand up and say, no, I refuse to fear. We talked about this yesterday in church and uh, or the other day in church when you got to stand in front of the mirror and speak to yourself. And you've got to say, I am not going to be afraid. I am not going to allow fear to be my master. I am not going to allow anxious thoughts and, 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 and any type of panic attacks to control me. No, I have the peace of God. And you begin to talk to yourself. You begin to speak the word to yourself. You begin to preach to yourself. You begin to prophesy to yourself and over yourself what God has said from his word. And this uh, obviously initiates, uh, you, you exercise your authority and you initiate the power of God in the situation of your life, but as well, it brings God's peace from your spirit up into your soul, into your mind, so that you can actually operate in the peace of God. So I wanna go ahead and read that last part again. Jesus said, stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed, <laughs> and do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. Uh, that's a mouthful, but I'm telling you, every one of us can do this because we've been given authority and power in his mighty name, and through his mighty word, we are sons and daughters of the living God. We've been given the peace of God. We've been given the life of God. We've been given the nature of God. We've been given, uh, you know, the power of God, the sound mind of Christ, the love of God. All these things are within us and we have God for us. He's not against us. So we can rise up and we can actually be who God's called us to be. We can we can stand in our place of authority, drive fear out of our life, anxiety out of our life, and watch the peace of God begin to dominate. Um, it's not easy. It'll be a challenge. And maybe this is the first time you've heard this. Maybe you're joining in. To what, you weren't at our service on Sunday, and you might think, Pastor, this just sounds so hard. Well, you've got grace to do it, so it's not as hard as you think, but it will be a challenge. And there will be days it will seem like, oh my goodness, what's going on? But I, I, I say this uh, to my kids all the time, you either, you're either going to have pain on the front side or pain on the back side. In other words, you're either going to have the pain of discipline right now on this front side to do what you should do, or the pain of the consequences on the back side. And the pain of the consequences is always multiplied. You know, let me just give you a little revealing of myself and I'll, I'll close up with this you know uh, I've been wanting to 
like everybody, you think about, I don't know if everybody feels this way, but as I've gotten older, even more so, I'm thinking about my, my weight, keeping myself healthy, not trying to allow myself to gain weight every year. And as I get older, I want to stay healthy. So, you know, I, I have these battles and there's times I think, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to do this. And then lo and behold, I, I have this moment over the last few nights where I'm, I'm home and then, you know, the, 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 the pantry's calling my name. You know, it's, it's like the popcorn's calling my name or that ding dong from hostess is ringing the doorbell to my stomach because something's happening, you know, and it's calling my name. And the next thing you know is, is that I'm, I'm thinking I, I want to I wanna, I wanna lose that extra pounds. I want to do this, but I'm not willing to, to have the pain right now. Then the pain would be just say no. And, and even with the cravings and, you know, even the desires and maybe the stomach rolling, I, if I just would just pay that price then, that I wouldn't have to pay the price of the consequences, which would be, well, I didn't lose the 10 pounds or maybe I added some weight, whatever it may be. But I know that sounds kind of just, you know, natural, but that's how things operate in life. If, you, if you're not willing to pay the price on the front end, you're going to have to pay the price on the back end. So, and the price on the back end is always worse. So, you know, you might say this sounds really difficult to to do what you're saying. It's it's not, you've got the grace of God. I mean, it's not that it won't have challenges and God's there to help you, but the price you'll pay now to walk in freedom, oh man, it's so much, so much less than the price you pay later when it comes to all the consequences of your bondages because you'll never get out of it. So I just want to encourage you along that line today, get back here next week uh, to church, actually this coming Sunday uh, to church. And uh, Pastor Brandon is going to be doing part number three on this series and we're going to hit more on that area of depression. And we're going to do something uh, together on the stage. Uh, and uh, maybe, we're, we're playing around with this thought, so I can't guarantee this, but maybe uh, we may even do it as a live podcast. So we might, um, obviously you'll get to watch it live, but maybe we'll take some of that or, or all of it or a portion of it and put it on the podcast for next week. So what you could do is this. Maybe you want to maybe have some questions for us. We won't, I'm not, I can't guarantee that we'll, ask your, we'll answer your question or we'll get to your subject matter, but we'd like to know more things. Uh, maybe some questions you have about victory and uh, getting free in that area of mental health. Listen, I'm, I'm not a therapist and uh, I'm not a psychologist. I am uh, I'm a pastor, but I, I am someone that, that knows the Holy Spirit, and I do know the Word of God, and I know that we can help you. This is our role, and we can help you get free. So, uh, you know, send us some things in, send us questions in, and we'll we'll do our best to try to answer some. Maybe in, in the service on Sunday, that'd be kind of cool if your question got answered on Sunday, or then uh, on another podcast. Maybe we can take this another week with it, depending on what type of response we'll get. So it's really up to you whether we do more or not. So, thank you guys for joining in today. I know it's by myself. Uh, but you know, I'm excited about it because you're watching this on Wednesday. And so today when you're watching this, if you're watching it at 12 noon, it is mine and Pastor Brandy's anniversary and, uh, 22 years. So if you get a chance, uh, you know, say something out there to Pastor Brandy, but I want to say it to her, even her happy anniversary, baby, 22 years. And I'm telling you what, we just, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And I'm so glad. I'm so thankful to God that he brought me and uh, brought you into my life and that I, my life has been radically changed. I am so much of a better person, a man, a pastor, a dad, whatever, because you're in my life. So thank you. Thank you for saying yes 22 years ago. And uh, I love you so much. So happy anniversary. Uh, so that'll be it for this podcast today. So join in again on Wednesday, 12 noon. Get here on Sunday, though, and uh, make sure that you're always at church as much as you possibly can. We love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.